We're gonna learn how to use this DTG equipment today. A few months ago, I made a video unboxing the new Polyprint Echo 2 DTG machine and their Pre-Treater Pro for the new shop. Well, since then, there has been a lot going on with getting the new shop up and running. A little bit of good, a lot of bad that I'll fill you in on as things progress in future videos. But because of everything going on, I have not had even a minute to get these machines fired up, tested, and working properly. But we're gonna put an end to that today. We're gonna finally fire these machines up, we're gonna train, we're gonna learn how to use them, and hopefully by the end of this video, get everything fully operational so that I can finally start offering DTG services here at Rogue Lab. I have never used a DTG machine before. I've printed a lot of shirts, but never on a DTG, so this could get interesting. You might be questioning why you even mess with a DTG when you've got all this badass screen printing equipment in here, and I still think DTG has its place here. We get a lot of requests for orders that are below our screen printing minimums, or say like 25 piece orders that have a crap load of colors on them that wouldn't be cost effective or make any sense to screen print, so the DTG will definitely fill that gap nicely. And while you do have things like DTF transfers that are gaining a huge amount of popularity in the industry and kind of covering a lot of those bases, there's a couple things about that that I really don't like still. Number one is the feel, and don't get me wrong here, I think DTF transfers are great, they've got a lot of really good applications, and we're gonna be exploring that topic in future videos for sure, but when it comes to doing, say, like a big front print like this on a shirt, the feel of it is just, I don't like it. There's adhesives involved, there's all kinds of stuff, and a transfer is never going to feel as good as printing directly onto a shirt. It doesn't matter how you do it, it's just never the same. It doesn't drape the same, it always kinda ends up feeling like a big sticker. And number two is, I hate relying on people for shit. It drives me absolutely bonkers, especially when it comes to my business. So, if I was to get DTF transfers, I gotta deal with a company who makes them, I gotta meet their minimums, I gotta hope that they get everything done on time and get it done to the quality standards that I expect. I've got to rely on the shipping company and hope that they don't mess things up and we all know how that's been the last couple of years, so there's a lot of ways that that could go wrong. All of this just translates down to more time, more energy, and more stress on my part, more time for us to get jobs out the door, and most importantly, more time that the customer has to wait for something that they ordered. So with one of these bad boys at my disposal, all of that time and that quality control, that's in my hands now. And the cool thing is if I do need DTF transfers, this thing can make them, so it's kind of a win-win for me. Anyways, we got a lot to cover here today, so I'm gonna shut the hell up, and let's get to work. I think we're all ready to go here. Setting up the hardware side of things, both machines, super straightforward, very simple. I don't think it really gets any easier than that. Software side of things, however, there's a couple of things I could use some work. The first thing is that there was no instructions on how to install and set up the software on the little USB stick that had the instructions to set up the hardware side of things. And I'm a very computer tech savvy person and there was a lot to unpack in there. We're talking folders on subfolders on subfolders in there. and. Someone who's not so good with a computer would definitely have issues with that. I did look on their website and found the instructions for it on there, but I'm here to review and nitpick things, and it would have been nice to have it on the same dongle so everything was all in one place and easy to find. And the other thing is something I'm really not a fan of, and it's come up a few other times in this industry with other equipment, is that to register that software, you need a physical dongle to activate it every single time, and I can't tell you how much I hate this stuff. Not only do you have to make sure you never lose this thing and have it plugged into your computer at all times, but in this case, sometimes it just doesn't work. Both pieces of software on there did not pick this thing up. Even though the computer is reading it, I could open it. Both of them said that I don't have an activation key, even though it's right here in my hand. So both pieces of software are not operating at full capacity. Both of them are on a 15-day trial at this moment. So uh, 
yeah, that also kind of sucked. Hopefully I'll get a hold of someone at Polyprint to help me fix that, but uh, it's a little bit annoying. I kind of wish companies would just get rid of this whole thing altogether and just give you a key to activate online and it's you have it forever. You can always find it, you can always get it again. It's just, I don't know, hardware keys are dumb. Well, it's late, so I'm gonna pick this back up tomorrow. I'm supposed to wait for Polyprint to train me on how to use these things, but it's the weekend right now, it just started, and the odds of getting someone to help me on that in the next couple days are pretty slim. I'm a very impatient person, so I might just take this on myself and try to figure it out. It's the next day, and as I predicted, the Polyprint guys are not gonna be able to help me with this for a few more days. They're doing a trade show right now somewhere over on that side of the Atlantic, so totally understandable, but I'm impatient, so we're gonna try and figure this out ourselves. Luckily though, Polyprint has a ton of learning resources on their website, and I mean a shitload. Big props to them on that, very helpful. So I went through a lot of that stuff for a few hours last night and another few hours this morning, and I think I've got a pretty decent grasp on what I'm doing here. And if need be, I can keep referring back to that learning info. So I've got a multi-computer nerd station set up here. Hopefully we're gonna figure this out today. Oh, I'm excited to get this started. I've been waiting to use this little area I built out for so long. I do wanna mention that all the equipment in here that I'm mentioning today is gonna be linked down in the description below. So in case I miss something or you wanna learn something further, it's down there for you. Let's get the show on the road. One thing I already knew about DTG is it requires a lot of different heat pressing steps. Not always, but sometimes you gotta pre-press the shirt before it goes in the pre-treater. When it comes out of the pre-treater, you gotta press it again to cure the pre-treat. Then you print the shirt, then it comes back out of the printer and back onto the heat press again to cure the print. You can also cure them in a conveyor dryer like the one I have behind me, which that one's probably one of the best ones on the market for curing DTG, but that thing is set up for screen printing. That's where the biggest bulk of our production lies, so it's gonna stay dedicated to that the heat press is gonna cure the DTG stuff. And the badass dual air fusion here is gonna speed up my production a lot. Obviously having two stations on it, I can set each station up individually so I can have one set up for pre-treat curing, one set up for print curing, and I can set up like four different parameters per cycle. So I can set it up to do both pre-treat and then cycle over to both cure if I wanted to. There's so many different ways you can do this. It's a really awesome setup. You can also do sort of the same thing with the manual single station version of this press that I have over here. You get two parameters so you can set it up to pre-treat and then cure would be a really great heat press to start out with. For today, I am not at all worried about production speed. I'm worried about learning how to use these machines properly and getting a print that sticks and lasts. So I've got it set up one station for pre-treat, one for print curing. From what I can tell, this thing seems pretty straightforward. We got five different presets we can choose from here to change our spray pattern. And if we want to, we can tap on it and go in there and edit it to whatever size area we want. There's a couple different edit modes in here to choose from. There's the grid mode where you just go through and tap little squares on the screen to tell it where you want it to spray adjust how much spray you want it to put down, and that's really it. And then you've got the linear mode where you can select which nozzles you want to spray, the amount of spray length, and you can even control the offset down from the neck. So that's pretty sweet. This is the one I think I'm gonna use today. So I've got the shirt oriented in there the way that it looks on the screen. If I wanted to put it in the other way, I could 180 it, flip it around, which is really cool too. Um, I'm gonna do a little left chest print on this one. So I'm gonna disable these two nozzles. I'm gonna set the spray length to like, uh, probably like five inches. I'm thinking I'm gonna do like three and a half, four inches on the chest print. Uh, and I'm gonna set the neck offset down to, I don't know, two inches. So let's bring that up to the six inch spray area. That should hit where I want it to hit. Big props to whoever designed this interface because it is very simple and very intuitive. I feel like I didn't even need to do half the research that I did last night. This went way too easily. But I shouldn't speak too soon. Something is bound to go wrong here. So let's find out. Now onto the artwork side of things. It sounds like the software can handle both vector and raster art, which is great because we primarily design in vector, but we do the odd bit of raster art and that's what I wanna print today. So this is the shirt that I'm trying to make here today with this really cool 3D purple chrome Rogue Lab logo that I made in Photoshop. If you wanna see how I made this thing, there's a video all about it. You can just click on this little thing right over here. I've already got the artwork set up here. We're not gonna go through that. Maybe I'll do another video about that later. Everything's flattened, background's knocked out, scaled to size. So we should be able to just send this over to a rip software 
and start figuring that out. But since I'm talking about Photoshop right now, it would be a good time to mention that this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community filled with thousands of killer classes to help you step up your creative game. Photoshop was essential in creating a design like this, and even though I made a video covering every single step of it, you may want more instruction on how to use Photoshop. You might just be starting, or you might want to take it to the next level and make something way better than I can. Skillshare is the place to do that. If you're just getting started, I highly recommend the Photoshop Basics class by Daniel Scott. And since they're sponsoring today's video, Skillshare is giving away a free one month trial membership to the first 1,000 of you guys who join the community using the link down below. So make sure to check that out. Skillshare is what I use to learn a lot of this stuff and I can't recommend it enough. All right, let's figure out this rip. I got my design loaded into the rip pretty painlessly. Some of it seems very simple, other parts not so much. I did like how they have different print cues for black shirts, colored shirts, white shirts, DTF, and the type of graphic, each with different kinds of settings. I thought that was pretty smart to have. There seems to be full control over how much underbase it lays down, how much choke is on that underbase, and there's even a highlight white setting that I found, which is pretty cool, so there's a lot of kind of screen printing-esque types of settings in there. The only thing that I didn't find any information on is how to position your artwork before printing, which is kind of crazy because that seems like one of the most key things you need to do. They do have this little window that shows like a one inch by one inch grid and by the looks of it, a platen on there, which is cool. So you can kind of get an eyeball on how it goes. But if you look at it, the outer border of it is cut off and I'm guessing that's the little frame that goes around the platen that holds the shirt from moving. Well, that grid, if you look at it, is cut off in a very weird place all the way around. So it's very hard to eyeball where you're gonna drag and drop your artwork. If it was an exact grid, you could go, oh, three inches down, that's three blocks, four inches over, that's four blocks, away you go. I did, however, find these little things down here where you can position it entering a value. So I just entered three inches, I hit three inches down, I think, I don't know. And then I went nine inches over, because by the look of it, I don't think it's reading the center point of the artwork, it's reading the outer edge, because if I center this thing, it's saying it's at 4.94 inches, and that's obviously not the center of this 17 inch width grid we got here. I'm just gonna round that up to five inches because 4.94 is negligible, and I'm always rounding up inches, ask my girlfriend. <laughs> so using my screen printing knowledge, we're gonna hit this thing in the left chest, three inches down, four inches over, so that five inches we got there, I'm just gonna change that to nine. That's gonna move it over, and I think that's gonna land us with a left chest imprint. <laughs> Well, loading a shirt was pretty straightforward. To get this little frame thing adjusted to hold everything tight, took like 10 seconds. Being a screen printer though, everything in my body wanted to put adhesive down on this palette, which to my understanding you can actually do. So that might be something I do in the future, but for now let's just use this thing as it's intended. All right, next thing I just gotta get the height adjusted, which on this thing, it's got an auto height adjust. I gotta hit one button and go in, sense the height of the shirt, adjust it. That's it. I guess that means we're ready to send this thing inside and press print. I'm so excited right now. Well, the first one's out and as I suspected was gonna happen, it turned out pretty terribly. <laughs> the colors and the white and everything is just, ugh, it looks awful. I don't know if that's like an artwork prep thing or a setting that I did on here, or something with the pre-treat. I know all of that stuff can affect it, but this is definitely not what we want. That's all part of the fun, I guess. We're learning with no real instructions. So I think my next step is I'm just gonna cure this thing. I'm gonna pre-treat this entire shirt front and back so that we can just start printing all over this thing until we get the settings figured out and make this come out looking nice. Hey, at least the placement landed pretty much where I wanted it to, so we're on the right track. My second try sure is a hell of a lot better. Night and day difference. I did a couple of things different this time. I turned up the amount of pre-treat a little bit, so that might've helped. And lastly, I cleared the print queue and just started over and let it print with basically all the default settings. The only thing that I changed on it was I turned it up to high quality mode, so maybe I shouldn't have been dicking around with the settings on the first one. Not sure which one of those things fixed it, but I'm gonna start messing around with settings again and see if I can narrow things down. Well, hot damn, I'm making progress quick. What do we got? One, two, three, four. We got six prints here, plus the one on the front where I really shit the bed, so that's seven. Seven prints, and I'm basically where I wanna be. I tested both the black shirt and the colored shirt print cues. Black shirt's definitely the way to go. Obviously, it's a black shirt, but I wanted to see color just in case. I wanted to see what it would look like with black ink thrown down on here, and 
it didn't come out good. And I tried a few of the different print quality settings. The one that seems to work best is the black shirt, high quality NP, I think it's called. That one came out really, really good. And on this one, I laid down a little bit more pre-treat. And I'm pretty sure that was the problem with the first print. Either uh, the print missed the pre-treat spot or I didn't lay down enough or something like that. I'm not sure what happened, but I think that was what was wrong. So we're definitely gonna run with this setting. This thing looks really good. It's probably like 90% of the way there. I think I'd like to get it a little bit more vibrant, either throwing down more underbase or cranking up the color vibrancy or maybe throwing in that highlight white setting. I'm not sure. I'm not gonna mess with any of that right now. I wanna make sure these prints actually hold up and I wanna dial in the pre-treat a little bit more. I'm gonna turn that down just a little bit and then print one of these things, cure it, and then I'm gonna wash the crap out of it and make sure it holds up. Dude, for a first try, these things look so damn good. The placements hit pretty much exactly where I wanted them to, so I think I got that figured out. The detail is really, really good. The vibrancy of the colors is like, I'd say 80 to 90% of the way there. I think that can be improved a little bit. And the one thing I did notice is that I'm getting like a box on the shirt where the pre-treat was sprayed. So it's either too much pre-treat, too much heat, too much pressure, something like that. So I actually did a second shirt here with a little bit less pre-treat. It made it a little bit better, but I can still see that box. So something in that stage can definitely be improved, but for now, I'm really happy with this for my, what, ninth or 10th try using this thing. This is nice looking stuff. But now I gotta make sure this shit holds up. A nice print is worthless if it falls off, fades or whatever after a couple of washes. So I'm gonna run these things through the washing machine a good like 10 times and kick the crap out of them. And if they come out of there okay, I'm gonna run some production on these things and maybe make some cool shirts to sell by the end of this video. <laughs> So the wash testing, that went pretty great. The print is still super vibrant. None of the color came off. The print is holding up super well. Everything's still sticking to the shirt. I washed and dried it on the heavy cycle like three or four times each. So I beat it up pretty good. Safe to say that our curing parameters are golden. And as you can see, that pre-treat box fully disappeared in the wash. So that's awesome. But still something I feel like I need to work on. I suspected that maybe the pre-treat marks might disappear or even fade over time, kind of like heat press marks do when you heat press a shirt. So I made an identical shirt, left it out for like a day and a half here without washing it. And it kind of faded a little bit, but it definitely didn't disappear. I spoke to a few people that I know that run single machine DTG setups or even full blown DTG shops. And the general consensus was that the box is basically unavoidable. It's gonna happen one way or another. It's just really coming down to minimizing it as much as possible. So that's a little bit disappointing and something that I'll have to get used to because I'm a perfectionist and I wanna hand someone a perfect clean, ready to go shirt without telling them that they might need to wash this thing first. But you bet your ass that I'm gonna put a lot of work into this pre-treat thing, trying different pre-treat solutions setups, techniques, whatever, to try and minimize that box as much as possible, or maybe even get it to disappear one day. I don't know. I've only been using this thing for a couple of days, so give me a couple of months and we'll get there. I also printed a white shirt with photo style design on there. The print came out super, super clean. Really impressed with that, but we're gonna touch more on this subject in a later video. And I was able to link up with one of the guys from Polyprint, not for a full training session or anything like that. They're still doing the trade show thing, understandable, but he was able to help me sort out the whole license key thing and we got the full version of the software working correctly now and that part's good to go. So now the fun part, I'm gonna fire this stuff up and run off like a 20 or 30 shirt production run to see what operating a DTG setup is really like.
Well, that was pretty interesting, that's for sure. It's a lot different than running screen printing production, let me tell you. Before today, I have never even seen how a DTG shop operates and how production is ran, so this was brand new to me, and I immediately picked out a lot of holes in my game. First thing to work on is rearranging the layout of all of this equipment behind me here. It's definitely not optimal right now. There was a lot of wasted moving around between the pre-treater, the heat press, back to the printer, all that stuff. I need to configure that all in a way that is gonna be the smoothest possible workflow. So that was a big hole that I noticed immediately. You probably noticed in that little montage that I had the other little single heat press going in there. So I had the dual and the single working in tandem, which definitely made a big difference in production speed. I think maybe once I start getting jobs for the DTG and that starts growing, that that will become a regular thing because the curing process on dark shirts, it takes some time. It's around two minutes. So I could have the dual dedicated to curing shirts because that I can just press the button, walk away from it. It kind of operates itself and then just be knocking out pre-treats on the single unit. But as for the printer and the pre-treater themselves, I got to say pretty awesome. I was able to get up and running very, very easily with zero training, just self-training myself with information from their website. And other than the few little hiccups at the start, it was very easy to get going. The pre-treater was absolutely flawless the entire time from setup to operations. Like I said earlier in the video, that whole interface that they set up is so user-friendly, so intuitive, and I can't imagine pre-treating shirts without one of those things, how much more time it would take and how inconsistent that they would be because this thing was just banging them out nonstop, super easily. I did make one small improvement in that department, which was a tip given to me by a shop owner that I know, and that was to get one of these little rubber wallpaper rollers to roll the pre-treat before curing it, just to give you a more consistent pre-treat and to mat all the fibers down in one direction, which definitely made a difference, but otherwise the pre-treater, absolutely amazing. I can't imagine operating without one. Coating the shit out of them with a paint gun or putting on with a paint roller or something. Uh -uh, that does not sound fun. This was consistent and dialed every single time. And then the printer, man, that thing really, really impressed me over the last couple of days. Being a screen printer, I didn't really expect the vibrant colors or ink coverage to come out of that thing that has, but it's good. The amount of detail that thing can throw down is top notch. As you can tell with this chrome design, there's a lot in there. That photo I printed earlier, it nailed it. It does take a little bit of time to get there with a big design on a dark shirt that needs an underbase. The back of this shirt is a 12 by 12 print and that was taking around six, six and a half minutes total to get done. So not lightning fast by any means, definitely not slow, but when you factor in how easy it is to set up and how quickly and easily it is to get up and running with one of these machines and produce a nice looking product, that balances out and is definitely a fair trade-off. And there's so much more that this thing can do yet. You can adjust every single aspect of how this thing prints. So I can really tailor it in to get it the way I want it. I can probably get better prints out of a better color, whatever. I've just been using the stock settings up until this point. Once I learn how to operate the software, that's all within my control. There's all the different weird stuff that this thing is capable of printing that we would normally never touch here. And there's the entire DTF aspect, which is so important, something that is blowing up in the industry right now. And that's something we're gonna cover heavily with this thing in the future. So. It's already proven itself to be a worthwhile addition to my shop. As I mentioned, all of the equipment that we used here today is gonna to be linked in the description below for you to check out. Definitely worth your time to do so. And if you want one of the shirts that we printed here today, those are also linked in the description below, available on the Rogue Lab website right now. So pick one up quick because there's only a small batch. And if you want any sort of DTG printing of your own done, we do that now, so you're already in the right place on the website. Just send in a quote form, we'll make it happen. Fuck yeah, we offer DTG now. That is a big goal checked off the list. I've been wanting to check that off for like three years now. Mm. Other than that, it feels good to be back making videos again. It's been good to see you guys. There's a lot more coming, so if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that button down below. Ding the frickin' bell if you haven't done so already. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you again in the next one. Can you hear that? There's a cricket somewhere in my shop and it's driving me insane. Oh, shit. Oh, you fucker, I had it. Oh, that was nice. Aw, oh, come on. Right when I turn the camera on. There's always a fan or something going in the background every time I try to talk. And then there's the linen. Oh, you motherfucker. Yeah!